Chapter 20, Pearl Tells the Truth This was Pearl and Ben's second visit to Dr. Wu's office. The room was as cluttered and messy as before, but some new items had been unpacked and now set on the shelves, including a jar of dry beetles, a box labeled troll teeth, and a glass orb that occasionally glowed. The afternoon sun streamed through the office windows, illuminating illuminating a bleached bird skeleton that hung in the corner. Come in. Dr. Wu was seated at her desk. Her black medical bag sat on the floor, a sprinkling of yellow glitter around its base. She was screwing the top onto a jar that appeared to be filled with fog. Have a seat, she said. Once again, Ben and Pearl settled on boxes. They shared a nervous look as Dr. Wu set the jar aside. She ran her four-fingered hand over her hair, pushing stray locks from her face. Then she folded her hands on the desk and looked at Ben and Pearl. Her lips pursed. Silence filled the room. Ben fid- Pearl fidgeted. Was Dr. Wu waiting for her to confess her crimes? Are we in trouble? Pearl asked as innocently as she could. Who was responsible for hanging the mirror on Button Island? Pearl took a long breath and squared her shoulders. I am, she said bravely. Ben didn't do it, so please don't get mad at him. I ran into town and got the mirror from the dollar store. You left the premises? Yes. Oh, no, is that the wrong thing to say? They weren't supposed to leave the hospital, and Pearl had gone all the way into town. She clutched the end of the box, waiting to hear those dreaded words. You are fired. But Dr. Wu just sat there, staring at her. I thought it would help the lake monster, Pearl explained. My parakeet, Lemon Face, loves his mirror. He thinks the reflection's another bird. And I thought that if the monster had a friend, it wouldn't feel lonely and it would let Ben go. Ben was stuck on the island. I forgot to tell you that. And the leprechaun, too. I took the leprechaun outside. I'm sorry, Pearl cringed. I won't do it again. Dr. Wu sat back in her chair. A mirror, she said quietly. A mirror to combat loneliness. Then she smiled. That's ingenious. Pearl couldn't believe it. She nearly fell off the box with surprise. What? Ben, who'd been sitting as still as a statue, let out a sigh of relief. Dr. Wu explained. The lake monster has amnesia. She bonked her head on a troll ship and afterwards she couldn't remember who or what she was. Amnesia is terribly confusing. She started scooting around on her belly on land, making a dreadful nuisance of herself. So we brought her to the hospital for treatment. Her memories are slowly returning, but she's been very sad and very lonely. The mirror appears to have made her happy, and I think it will help her remember who she is. Dr. Wu's smile widened. Well done, Pearl. Pearl was used to hearing, What have you done? But rarely had she heard, Well done. Thanks, she said. Dr. Wu leaned her elbows on the desk. And Ben, you must have played a part as well. Yes, he helped hang the mirror, Pearl said. Ben nodded. Very good. Dr. Wu opened her desk drawer and pulled out two pieces of paper and wrote on each one. These are certificates of merit for curing lake monster loneliness. Congratulations. Pearl took her certificate. Ben did likewise. Thanks, they both said. Pearl tingled with pride. Even though she'd broken a million rules, everything was going to be okay. Dr. Wu cleared her throat. There is, however, another matter we must deal with. Her voice had turned serious. It was as if all the sunshine had been sucked from the room. Pearl's shoulders slumped. "Uh Uh-oh, said Ben. He sank back onto the box. Trouble time. Do you remember signing the contract of secrecy? Dr. Wu asked. Pearl and Ben nodded. The contract states that you would not remove an imaginary creature from the hospital without permission. You broke this rule. Ben didn't break it, Pearl said. Ben didn't have anything to do with the leprechaun. It was all my fault. It wasn't all your fault, Ben said. I'm the one who got grabbed by the lake monster. 
I'm the reason you went and asked the leprechaun for help. Yeah, but you didn't even want to go outside. I'm the one who talked you into it. Yeah, but I didn't have to go out there. It was my choice. You didn't force me. Dr. Wu cleared her throat. It would appear that the two of you have established a strong friendship. That will be helpful as you continue your studies. Continue? Pearl asked. You're not going to fire us? Dr. Wu sighed. No, I'm not going to fire you, but you will be punished for breaking the rules. Now, what sort of punishment should I assign? She reached over and pressed a button on her office intercom. Mr. Tabby? Yes, his voice replied. Do you have something particularly nasty that needs doing? Pearl and Ben exchanged a worried look as a long pause hissed through the speaker. What would Mr. Tabby come up with? Yes, I do indeed have something particularly nasty. When they come to work nest next, I shall assign them the tax task of... Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please don't make us take care of the Sasquatch again, Pearl thought, giving the Sasquatch a flea bath. Drat!